Hello Akron fans, and welcome to another exhibition match. This time we're going to be on Felsic Inferno, which is a map we have not seen in a while. But, it should look a lot better, the new version. So yeah, this is version 1.5.0.0. First casted game of that version. Not a whole lot changed, actually. I made an overview video, but in terms of game balance, really nothing has changed. So, very, very minor changes. Some graphical changes, though you've been seeing them in these videos this whole time. And a bunch of mod side changes, which won't really be obvious in this particular game because it's not using EXP or anything with timeline changes, but I did show that off in the overview video as well. So, basically, nothing to report right now. Both players just setting up their early start, getting their economy going, and... Cronabert very quickly going for Vekir, while J Raccoon, not sure what he's going for, probably Grekum, he usually does, and he's still choosing apparently. There we go, he is going for Grekum. So Grekum getting built up, Vekir getting built up, and Crimer going for possibly economic start, getting three early RPs on Liquid Crystal. Not sure if he's going for a fourth yet, or if he's going to be going for... Well, I guess this really is really his only option, otherwise he'd be building a foundation, and that might work. Felsic Inferno is not a terribly large map, but it's still a map I wouldn't really recommend doing that on if you aren't sure your opponent's going to be doing any major rushes. And Cronobert is scouting this out right now, scouting Jericho out with his Akron. Jericho doing the same thing with his own Akron. Jericho, however, is not really showing off his hand quite yet. Nothing, Doing nothing out of the ordinary at this point. Let's see, where is Cronobert doing his stuff? So Cronobert building a fourth RP, so he is definitely going a bit more of an economic build. And like I said, this could work in this map. Really, it's a question of how much Jericho is planning on rushing himself, and it looks like it actually isn't really clear. So, J Raccoon's still sort of going. Not really sure what's going on with that, but he should be coming up with something. Here we go. Two Octos on RPs, and another one just sort of hanging out with the Akrons going by each other, and Kron Aberrant at his base is just... Continuing to build, nothing really going on yet. He's continuing to get his economy going and hasn't yet started up a depot production or infantry production. Very quickly getting a comm up, however, worried about making sure that he doesn't get any proxy happen to him at all. So this comm up will be basically able to see the entire expansion and quite a ways out as well. With the Akron getting heavily damaged, Jericoon likely to pull this away, but certainly discouraging the scouting right now, and that is a good idea to do. On the other hand, Crime looks like he's going to be able to get away with scouting completely free. There's nothing up yet for Jericoon actually defending us. This Jericoon was further in the past as well. He is focused at this point in time, and Crime Abbott just sees nothing really threatening there and decides to stay in his base because stay with his economy. No reason not to, really. So at this point, both players definitely are focused heavily on economy, and neither player has decided to go for anything aggressive. Jericoon getting another Octo, but that was a Crime point of view, jumping back about two minutes to when, or one minute to when Jericoon is. He's just reviewing what he had, looks like he might be, he is moving his Akron away, making sure that it doesn't get hit by anything, and that... I'm sorry, I'm kind of getting distracted, I don't know if you noticed, there's these little particles here that... It meant to be very subtle, but I'm not sure what happened in the latest version, apparently the particle rendering system got changed a bit, so now they're really obvious and purple when they're supposed to be subtle and red and moving upwards. Anyway, I digress. With J Raccoon building up a QPRP, we're actually starting to get into some tech, or at least potential for tech. Cronamert's still going for Liquid Crystal, has not yet built a depot. He is really confident that J Raccoon is not going for anything aggressive, and he's right. J Raccoon is definitely focused on getting up, well, potential for tech, probably getting advanced structures fairly soon. They didn't have a reef yet, this is a two minute mark. And normally you'd get a reef somewhere around the three minute mark, so it's still not quite there yet, but it's going to be pretty soon. And Crimer, there we go, getting his depot, the 330 mark. And does he have any additional infantry? He does not. He is focused entirely with the starting three infantry he had. And skipping all of his... Okay, skipping all his RPs to... Or half his RPs to Q-Plasma. Getting very focused in vehicles and looks to be doing a pretty powerful changeover. Given the amount of money he has, I'm guessing he probably is going to be building up Oh, another Zion Veer from the looks of it. So he's getting another Zion Veer, and that will be another Zion Pulsar. So probably two or three Zion Pulsars being just tele skip teleported straight into J Raccoon's base. And J Raccoon will be 
not really well prepared to deal with that. He's he is 30 seconds down from there. He does have an Octopod coming up. One Octopod against oh an Octo and an Octopod. That's actually not bad. That could work. One Octopod against two or three Zion Pulsers. The Zion Pulsers should win unless they're really out of position from each other. And Jericoon pulling back his Acron into the base of Scout Out, seeing the Octopod, definitely worth seeing, but that's something he wants to avoid. Jumping back further to avoid getting hit at all, and he needs to not queue that order, he needs to just get out of the way. Don't know why he's queuing the order to escape, because that... If that Acron dies, it's going to be that much harder to command anything at that point in time. I mean, you can't command anything when your Acron's dead, and... Even though it won't be dead permanently if he ran, manages to run it away, there'll still be that one time wave where he can't do anything, and that's still annoying. But he's running away, successfully getting out of the way, avoiding any attacks, keeping the Octo actually at bay. The Octo moving in, and that's going to be doing some damage if it managed to reach the Akron. However, if the Akron distracts the Octo enough, the Zion Pulses would be able to get rid of it. Actually, they have pulled it away from the base. Jericoon might want to pull that Octo back, at least once he starts getting attacked. Cronabert has, well, he's focusing before the depot is done. Actually, it looks like he's delaying the depot slightly. It's a little bit bizarre. Perhaps he was getting more Zion Veer. So it looks like he had the money to do it in the first place. Regardless, he is still getting his depot. It will be up at the same time. And getting more Zion Veer. So he'll be able to very quickly get those Zion Pulsers. And it looks like he's distracting the Octopod and the Octo. Jericoon going for a bit of an aggressive strategy here. But that's a bad move. If that Octopod gets out of the base for too long. At this point, we have the edge is going to be quite vulnerable. Jericoon moving away from this. And Cronaver jumping back to the unplayable past edge. His depot just building up, so he's not quite able to actually do anything. But that is going to be a big threat. The Octopod moving out of the way to chase after the Acron. Not a bad idea for a snipe, but given that Cronabrin is going to get Zion Pulsers out any second now, really. Well, in about 12 seconds. Here we go. At the 4.30 mark, he is getting Zion Pulsers. He should be getting the Skip Teleport upgrade, but he's not focused at that point in time long enough to do so. And J Raccoon building up another Octopod, so he will be a bit better defended, and moving his Octopod and Octo back. This should be a safe strategy. He's going to be probably fine from this point on. While Crun Aberrant... There we go. There's the Skip Teleport upgrade I was looking for. No other Zion Pulsers, however. It's... Oh, he doesn't have much cash for it. He's moving some of his RPs back in order to get the cash he needs for it. Because two Zion Pulsers really isn't enough. He needs three or four, especially with the second Octopod. Four or five would be wise. And a reef, I think, is going to be coming up fairly soon. But it looks like... No, Jericho's continuing to build more Octos. Not focused on getting any tech. He's instead focused entirely on getting Octopods. Just now getting an Octo in a Progen mode to get a Seppi for Reefs. And there is that Seppi right here with a second one. So he is getting the Bubble Wrap. Jericho definitely decently prepared. But Cronaberant is moving himself into position to deal real damage here. Or maybe not. He's... Ah, I see. He's getting his bookmark up so he can deal real damage as opposed to fake echoed out damage. Where is anything else going on here? Cron Jer Aberrant has enough money to get another Zion Pulsar, and he really needs to get one if he's going to get one. But no, he's going for another Teth Veer, focusing on defense. So this harassment assault is purely for harassment's sake. I don't think it's going to work very well. That's a lot of money being spent on this. Godfather moving in, not quite in a position to see the Zion Pulsars. Very close, but not quite so. Jericho not seeing them in time, and Cronaberant does have a good opportunity. The Octopods are just hanging out on the south side of the base, not worried about Zion Pulses, for example, teleporting down from the north side of the base, which they are about to do. So Cronaberant waiting for that playable blast. There we go! He is going for the teleport! Hitting one of the Seppies, killing one of the Seppies, killing the other Seppi soon after, but Cronaberant still has control over this. He needs to teleport out of the way and not focus on the Seppies anymore. This time around, focusing on the resource processors. Much wiser move. Since those are not being actually defended, however, Jericho can go to the unplayable past edge, getting his Autobots into position to deal with this, and they certainly will. Cronaberant might be able to take out one, but the second one will finish them off, and this Reef here will help, but one of them being damaged, the other one, both Reefs can be able to come up. Zion Pulsers managing to kill one of the Octopods, but they should get it out of the way. They have made cost by killing that, Zion, that Octopod. That Zion Pulsar needs to run away and repair. It's the only way it has any chance of being at all useful at this point. And Karn Aberrant building a couple foundations. He is very worried about Faropods right now. Getting the foundations for detection with the Teth Veers for anti-air is a very good idea. However, it's a little bit premature. Karn Aberrant not actually facing up against Faropods anytime soon. Octopods, however, will be the order of the day, and he needs to have a lot of Zion Pulses to deal with that. 
Zion Churches might work, but Zion Pulsers in large numbers deal with Octopus, no problem. And he is getting a couple of more Zion Pulsers. Moving the Zion Gear over to an expansion to try to take that. Hopefully won't be a problem. I don't think it will be, but it's too early to see quite yet. Jericho and folks in the future, and I was worried he's going to get Chrono Pointing in the future, but no, it doesn't appear he was. Check him in the present. No, the present has not been updated with what he was doing. So we're not quite sure what he's up to yet. But he's definitely going to be able to get advanced structures whenever he wishes, and I was wondering if he's getting Chrono Pointing further in the future, but he is not. However, these Octopods are really the best option. Cryobrant is very prepared for for any air, but he's not prepared for ground assaults. He only has one Zion Pulsar, and while the Foundations are great for healing, and as more Zion Pulsars are coming up, there's also more Teth Pulsars coming up, which won't be of any use against Octopods. And one Oct well, actually, no, the Acorn coming in here. Jericho saying the Acorn further in the future for scouting purposes. Just to see what's going on, and he does see that more Zion Pulsars have been built. Three Zion Pulsars and one Teth Pulsar. The five Octopods should be able to deal with them without too much issue. It's just a question of when they actually get to the point of attacking. Because right now, Jerrican's focused entirely on base defense with them, not using them to attack. But at the Implodo Past Edge, he appears to be prepared to attack. He has them further front in his base. They look about ready to go, and they are, in fact, going to attack. Jericho jumping away from that to keep it in the playable pass so it doesn't propagate until the green timer comes along. And Kron Amrit double checking this assault, seeing the Akron be destroyed right before it isn't destroyed, that destruction being undone. Jericho keeping it in his base ultimately. But J Raccoon is. Well, he is going to be just hanging out here for a little while. While Kron Aberrant. I mean, it looks like he's hanging out here, of course. He is actually. Once the screen time comes along through the Implayable Pass, we will see Jericoon dealing some damage. That is when his forces are coming in, and Cryhammer didn't really prepare very well to deal with that. He's got his vehicles near the depot, not really near anything vulnerable. The Octopods could come in and start damaging the depot without too much repercussions. And one Zion Bulls are coming in here, just a bit of scouting and harassment. While the green time we see is coming and dealing quite a bit of damage. No! Damage being dealt to J Raccoon. The Octopus being intercepted slightly, but Kron Aberrant not quite able to deal with it quite yet, and getting rid of the Zion Viewer that was going to expand. The expansion out to be not very safe. And getting rid of that Zion Pulsar so it never actually deals the damage that Kron Aberrant thinks it's going to deal. Or so it would appear, at least. That might have been another... No, that was the same one. So Kron Aberrant not dealing any damage to Jericho's base, and Jericho's Octopus dealing quite a bit of damage to Kron Aberrant's very nearly destroying the depot, and... Design Pulse is doing what it can to fight it off without jumping into the depot, but it will have to jump into the depot or die, and die is what exactly it does. Zion Veer not being able to get close enough to the Octopus before being melted away in the depot, being destroyed as well. Cronaver definitely on the ropes right now, getting a Zion Tercher, but not pushing it forward. Now finally pushing it forward, but only able to kill one of the Octopods. The depot is still going to be going down, two of the Octopods going down in response. That does make cost, but. The real problem is the opportunity cost. Losing that depot, he could build another depot from the foundations. And it looks like he's building another foundation entirely. But probably not a depot. More foundations for healing. Trying to keep this depot alive just by foundation healing. Not nearly enough, but it is at least something. The Octopods focus heavily on the foundations. However, those foundations don't have much health. The Zion Tertiary is a slightly better target, but even then, not enough. Another depot should be built. Crimer has the... No Chrono Energy! He has the resources, but no Chrono Energy to deal with this. And at the same time, Jericoon is focusing on an expansion towards the north, getting that handled and getting a Spire in his main base so he can follow up with air units. Chrono Aberrant, despite his preparations for air units, has been completely stymied by his ground force, which actually destroyed his depot, which he would have needed, and a lot of foundations too, which means the Farpods will have a much easier time dealing with his base. And of course, Jericoon getting the expansion. This is the correct thing to do. I'm very glad to see a player expanding on an attack, because that is the way you play RTS for the most part. Especially in RTS, well, like, Akron, a lot of RTS games like this are like this, where you build an expansion when you attack. It's a very wise time to do it. And Chronoporting being built up too. Jericoon adding insult to injury by adding Chronoporting. If you guess that in time, you will, of course, be able to Chronoport these units back and add that much more damage to it. The bigger concern, however, is the Zion Tertiary, which manages to eventually push away the Octopods. However, the Octopods dealing quite a bit of damage, and Kron Aberrant now on the back foot by a wide margin. With the expansion towards the north, Jericho is definitely taking this game by force. He's There's not much that Kron Aberrant can do at this point. He's building a ton of foundations, though. 
That's something, at least. Certainly we'll have a much harder to penetrate base, but... No real assets on top of this. He should be building a depot and an aerial control center from here. Or at least a depot. An aerial control center optional, but definitely a depot. He has a fair amount of money. He could rebuild some forces, rebuild some more stuff, but Sebi Pod and Farbud coming up, and Leo Class also being built, so Jericho is preparing, it looks like, for an Octoligo attack. Dropping the Farpod and Sebipod into position to start spawning Octoligos. So that's likely what we're gonna see finishing up the game. Another depot has been built, and another com hub being built, foundation being built towards this expansion to help defend it. Not a bad idea, but that expansion is still fairly vulnerable, and foundations, of course, don't last particularly long time. A bit I'm surprised Carnabbit has not gotten auto defense yet. With the amount of foundations he has, auto defense would be wonderful, just because of all the little attacks going from there. And then, of course, he could translate them into Bastions for that extra bit of defense. But he's not doing so. Well, Jericoon building up and going for that attack near the unplayable past edge. Maybe not going for the progen with the pod class units, but he is definitely going for the attack. And the far the Sebi Pod coming in, taking care of that Zion Veer. Far Pod and Sebi Pod avoiding the Zion Veer, letting it live, surprisingly enough. I'm not sure why Jericoon didn't completely kill it. But this is the real plan the Octoligo attack. With Sebi Ligo, sorry, Sebi Pod and Farapod progenerating some Octoligos. And Jericho has the cash for this. Be progenerating them and probably chronoporting them back. I don't think he'd be able to line up with the attack that he sent in already, but he might be able to do so. We'll see. Now, chronoporting back the Sebi Pod would be the best option. Doesn't really matter at this point, though. The Zion Church is still going down. Lots of healing from the foundations, but not nearly enough. Especially since it's being distracted by the Sebi Pod attacking from the north. Octopod's attacking, getting rid of that comm hub. Now, Crimer, from his point of view, about 30 seconds down from here. He doesn't have any vehicles coming up yet, but he doesn't have the money for it. I'm surprised he hasn't started building them. There we go, getting a Teth Pulsar. He could use some Zion Pulsars, however, at least one Zion Pulsar, or maybe two, to take care of these Octopods. However, Teth Pulsar now is a decent idea. Though the Octoligos, this is the real concern, is the Octoligos taking out everything, and from there, Aerial Control Center isn't that useful. What you really just need is a lot of damage and a lot of beef to handle the Octoligos, because the Octoligos are evenly powerful against air and ground. Getting rid of the Far Pod quite easily, though, the Semi Pod also taking a lot of damage. The Test Pulse are coming to finish it off, but Jericoon should be chronoporting any time now. And I realize the meaninglessness of that sentence, but I still stand by it. The chronoport's going to happen, and it's going to happen soon. Now, Kramer losing a foundation, not the biggest deal, but he has been losing quite a few foundations, and since the foundations are his biggest asset, this is a big deal. And there we go, the Chrono Board happening. Jericoon will be uppercutting Crown Abbott and probably finishing him off with that. No further expansions have been built, however, Crown Abbott does have a Zion Churcher right here. Looks like he's trying to prepare for harassment at this point, way too late, but if he's lucky, he might be able to take care of the Akron. This is still assassin mode, after all, and his Akron quite safely behind these, well, fairly safely behind these foundations. While, right now, Jericho's Agron is completely undefended and out of range of the Reefs, for that matter. See, all the Reefs, none of them are in range. Crown might just be going for this. I don't know, however, Jericho does have more forces being built up further in the future. And that Crown is a big deal, but I think Crown may have forgotten about that Zion Tertiary, and it's unfortunate that he may have done so, because that, like I said, is going to could be very useful. Now, Shin Church is trying to do what it can as well, but not nearly enough. There's... Nothing Chronomer can really do other than Chronoport of himself, and he doesn't have Chronoporting of his own, doesn't have Gate Take of his own. Just now getting more Q Plasma and really quite short in resources. Lots of Liquid Crystal, but not using that to actually build anything. Zion Pulses would have been the option before, but then that's kind of late now. So we'll see Jericho from his point of view. Does it the Octoly was dealing quite a lot of damage. Chronomer spots the Chronoport starting and dealing all the damage it will, but Jericho. We'll see what comes up to, and a minute later, the entire base has been destroyed. At this point, it's way too late for Carnarvon to even try using the Zion Tertiary to destroy what Jericoon had for his Akron, because Carnarvon's Akron is going to die right now at 1445 mark, or 1450 mark, rather. And there we go, 1452, Carnarvon loses Akron, and that is game. That was... I liked seeing this expansion here. That was cool. I like seeing that was actual expansion going on, economy going on. Very nice to see. I'll have another game coming up shortly, so stay tuned.